today. I'll talk on the periodic motions and specifically on uh, simple harmonic motion, then uh, continue with damped oscillations and forced oscillations and resonance. Periodic motion is uh, any repetitive motion in which uh, repetition time is constant, which we call period. And uh, another important uh, parameter is the frequency, which uh, is reciprocal of the period, which counts uh, the number of repetitions within a unit of time. Simple harmonic motion is uh, one of the simplest uh, but most important periodic motion. In simple harmonic motion, uh, motion is sinusoidal. Uh, its importance is due to that uh, any periodic motion can be expressed as the sum of uh, simple harmonic motions. One simple example to simple harmonic motion is uh, the hook and spring and mass system, which uh, mass is attached to one end of the spring and other end of the spring is fixed to some position. Uh, mass uh, moves on a frictionless uh, ground. As uh, one moves the mass uh, away from its equilibrium position by x, uh, restoring force by uh, the spring is applied on uh, the mass, uh, which is linear to uh, the displacement. The proportionality constant is named uh, the force constant or spring constant, k. Uh, we understand any motion just uh, with constructing uh, the equation of motion, namely Newton's second law of motion. Here, uh, which states uh, that the net force equals mass times its acceleration. Acceleration uh, is the second time derivative of the position or the displacement. And uh, I'll leave uh, acceleration here alone. Second uh, derivative of the displacement is from the equation of motion. Uh, v, uh, is equals to k over m times x. This is uh, a sinusoidal motion. It moves back and forth to uh, a maximum displacement of A. Uh, this is the solution of this differential equation. Time uh, dependency of the displacement is A times cosine omega t plus phi. A is the amplitude here, uh, is the maximum extension uh, of the mass from its equilibrium position. Phi is the initial phase, because when t equals zero, only phi remains uh, within the cosine argument. And omega is the angular frequency, for the reason uh, will become clear soon. I will take the derivatives uh, of this uh, displacement. First time derivative gives the velocity of the object, uh, which is uh, again sinusoidal. And the second derivative of the displacement is the acceleration. Here uh, observe that uh, acceleration is minus omega squared times the displacement itself. Then inserting this acceleration into uh, the equation of motion back again, we observe that uh, omega is root squared k over m. Due to the periodicity, uh, we must observe the same things after or before one period. So inserting plus or minus one period into uh, the displacement, for instance, and then expanding uh, the expressions, we observe that omega times the period must be 2 pi. Omega equals 2 pi over the period, or 2 pi times the frequency. Since uh, the omega is uh, proportional to the frequency, we call it as uh, angular frequency, also because of its an angular variable. Angular frequency is determined by the physical conditions of uh, the system, k and m, uh, also the period and the frequency. As for a and phi, they are determined from uh, the initial conditions. Initial conditions are uh, those at t equals zero, uh, the displacement, let's uh, call it x naught, and uh, initial velocity, let's name it v naught. Inserting uh, into the displacement and velocity formula uh, at uh, t equals zero, we obtain x naught equals a times cosine phi and uh, v naught initial velocity equals minus omega a times sine phi. We have two unknowns and uh, two equations. Solving them together, we obtain amplitude 
and initial phase as functions of initial conditions. Two random examples on uh, simple harmonic motion are the simple pendulum and physical pendulum. Actually, simple pendulum is a mathematical approach. Uh, it's not a real uh, physical system. It is, consists of uh, a point mass m and a massless string of length l moves under the effect of gravity when uh, the uh, mass is moved away by angle theta from its equilibrium position, vertical position. It uh, swings under the effect of gravity. Since this is a rotational motion, we must construct the torque equation. Again, Newton's second law in a, another form. Torque on uh, the system equals the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is the second time derivative of the deflection angle. And I is the moment of inertia. For simple pendulum, moment of inertia uh, of the system, of the pendulum, is mass times its length squared. Gravity's effect uh, on the system is uh, applying torque, the length times mg sine theta. So this is the equation of motion. Here we have nonlinear term sine theta, so I don't know how to solve it. Let's uh, keep it for a while. The same uh, is valid for the physical pendulum. Physical pendulum is any rigid object which is uh, free uh, to rotate about some rotation axis. Uh, again, it uh, moves under the effect of gravity. So, uh, here's the center of mass of the rigid object. Then gravity uh, acts on uh, as an approximation, of course, to uh, the center of mass by mg. Uh, then a torque is applied by the gravity onto the rigid object uh, as d times mg sine theta. So again, we construct the torque equation. Uh, again, we uh, meet an another nonlinear equation, which is in the same form. Uh, as the uh, simple pendulum. Uh, actually, simple pendulum is not simple. So if I can uh, do the same thing in the case of who can spring and mass uh, problem, uh, I will uh, be able to solve the problem. Now, uh, the way for that is to linearize this nonlinear term sine theta. Sine theta will have a Maclaurin expansion in this form about uh, zero uh, angle. Then uh, for small angle, uh, we can make such an approximation that uh, higher order terms uh, are negligible for theta much smaller than unity. Then uh, approximating uh, sine theta to theta for small angles, uh, we will have uh, linearized uh, our equation of motion for simple pendulum, also for physical pendulum. Now. Uh, we have, again, two equations for simple harmonic motion. The solution to the both equations is uh, A times cosine omega t plus phi. Uh, here, is, of course, the theta is the function of time. So uh, taking the derivative and inserting into the equations, we obtain angular frequency for the simple pendulum, root squared g over L. Of course, it reveals the period and the frequency of the motion. And also for the physical pendulum, we have angular frequency root squared d uh, distance between the center of mass and the pivot times uh, mass times g accelerating acceleration due to gravity divided by moment of inertia uh, of the rigid object with respect to this axis root squared.